Hello, and welcome to back to Team Fowl, I guess, because that's still what we are. Um, we're doing the mid-season review of uh, Rel, Div 5, B, and C. I'm KS Blue. And today you are joined by Gengar. Nosedive, once again, is missing. I guess we are going to have to look at the sewers this time around to see what he is like winded up this time around. Probably yeah. drunk or something. I think probably he got caught up in the in the the US Thanksgiving. Since <laughs> so I, basically I, I've not he, heard from him since Wednesday. So that's sort basically of... <laughs> he's just full of chicken and just dying somewhere. Uh or some kind of bird, yes. Well turkey chicken they're all the same to me. I mean, the, t the taste is very different. <laughs> I mean, I ate duck today and still like glorified chicken. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, today we are not going to go over the games from last week, but we are going to go uh, in depth for each of the teams in both divisions. Uh, and we're gonna, and once we're done, we're gonna make some playoff predictions. We so... are going to look at the leaderboard, look at the scores, and see who is actually having a chance. Of getting to the playoffs and which players actually should more be like focused on developing their teams rather than mm. going for the playoffs. I mean, I will say, mathematically speaking, there's only a single team that has been eliminated across both divisions. But realistically speaking, there's a lot, there's a few more teams that are probably not getting in there either. Yeah, realistically <laughs> speaking, mm -hmm. I think the leaders in this division are very clear since there's only one playoff spot for 5 B uh, and 5 C. Uh, and most teams should be looking there to are rather two. develop. There are two, two playoff uh, spots. Division? Yeah, which oh, makes it very, okay. which makes it a completely different story. Yeah, still, it's going to be a. Um, but you're right. Case of like mo most teams are going to want to develop anyway because mm -hmm. like we got lots of chaos, lots of Nurgle. The only teams to track in like C, which really want to go on early, is like Wolves. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> wouldn't you know it? The first team we're looking at is a dwarf team, the Cowboy Dwarfs. By Karl Mir. Mm-hmm. We start off with a lack of Mighty Blow, but a nice appearance of lots of guards. This uh, is the reason why I think he's also winning a lot of matches. Uh, yeah, I mean, Dwarves are really good early on. Uh, he only has... No, he actually has two runners. He bought the second one. Uh, and he made a sacker at that. I like that. Um, as I said, he has a lot of guard. He's doing guard first before Mighty Blow, which I think is a solid choice. It makes your development slower, it is. but it makes you just so much stronger. For example, he has a uh, plus movement on the Troll Slayer, mm -hmm. which in general is a bad choice. But if you can get it like on a very developed uh, Troll Slayer mm -hmm. with like Mighty Blow piling on the Pro and everything, it's actually a good choice. I, I like. Sucks. I agree. It's I like. Oh, so, sorry. Go on. It sucks that he has it early on, but mm -hmm. if he can keep this guy alive, I'm going to say this if he can keep this guy alive, because uh, the oil miners of Pixel and Division 2 also had a movement up runner, and after he faced me, that runner wasn't alive anymore, but if he can keep it alive, it's going to be a good piece. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that assessment. I like movement on a troll slayer that is developed it or it has all its key skills but it's not really very good on it until it does have them i mean it's not bad but it's just there's much better options for it in um, general i completely agree with this dwarf team mm -hmm. except for the fact that he is a dodge long beard yeah that's the other thing that stood out to me um i like dodge on the runners i like dodge on the blitzers i I prefer uh, Diving Tackle on Longbeards. They have natural tackles, so Diving Tackle becomes really mm -hmm. dangerous on a Longbeard. Exactly. Plus, it's a player that's going to eventually take Stand Firm anyway. So... Might as well. Yeah. Exactly. Plus also, uh, here's the thing. Dodge is better on a Strength 4 player than it is on a Dwarf. And that's because the Strength 4 player has Strength 4. So... I would not take Diving Tackle on a Black Orc, but I, w I would take Dodge on a Black Orc. But a Longbeard is not a Black Orc. It having Tackle built in and it not having Strength 4 makes a very big difference here. Yeah. Still? Also, 3 oh. Deedles, mm. Apothecary, 
Perfect. You don't need more. Yep. And still no stadium enhancement. I'm I'm generally expecting to see that soon. Uh, I recommend Nuffles Altar because it is amazing on a dwarf team. If we do look at the statistics of this team, they have seven wins, one draws, and three losses. Uh, which yep. in this season, in this season, having six wins and one loss, this is pretty big. If you mm-hmm. look at the history, they have one versus your lizard Addy, Sukaris lizards. They have one versus the Valoran Spaladins, which I think is a admin team. team. Uh, yep, it is. They have one versus the uh, Heroes of the Sword Coast, which is King of the Cosmos mm-hmm. trying to rebuild his vampire team, which got beaten <laughs> up early on. Yep. Uh, the only one, one ver- the only <clears throat> team they've lost against has been the Chaos Dwarves, which is Skullcrushers. That's a surprising one, to be honest. And they've the Alt versus the Frozen Dead North before actually going into the <laughs> season. Yeah, but that that would have been in the Greenhorn. That game doesn't count. Uh, but yeah, this team is co- sort of convenient being first because it's also on the top of the leaderboard with 18 points. Uh, you can tell they've won a lot too, se- with 7 fan factor over over 11 speaking games. Of, speaking of the Lich's Skull Crushes, that's the next team we'll be looking at. Okay, let's take a look. They have five mighty blow. Uh oh, it's this team. <laughs> I don't know what to. I don't understand these bull centaurs. Uh, I I, I could I could understand doing one bull center like this, but doing both of them like this feels really weird to me. I understand it completely. You know what this sort of a tragedy is. Uh kill them and ask questions later actually this is a no it's late it's... late late yeah. game strategy it, it, this is this is developed uh i do like how lich... the chaos doors themselves are being built though lich is going for a ultra late strategy just building up the chaos mm-hmm. uh bull centaurs with like mighty blow and block giving them casualties and just giving them mm-hmm. touchdowns to build them up Giving Mighty Blow as early on as he can to the, to the Chaos Dwarf blockers mm-hmm. just to build them up. As you can see, he first goes Garth and then Mighty Blow, but mm-hmm. he, on the one, he went for Mighty Blow first. Well, what is probably... 15, he's 15 out of 16 mm-hmm. SVP, so he just needs to hit one first and he's going to be next level. Uh, well, what I know what I like to do for Chaos Dwarves is I like to alternate between Guard and Mighty Blow in the first level up, until you get Claw anyway. Uh... Well, so... This is the thing, you have the traditional school of uh, Chaos Dwarf, mm-hmm. which is you have to go for five blockers, two bull centaurs, and three rerolls, but then you have the long-term school of Chaos Dwarf. It's mm-hmm. actually a lot really different than most people think. Like, with the long-term of Chaos Dwarf school, you start with your two bull centaurs, your six blockers, only three hobgoblins, you get the reroll later on, you get... Mighty blow on all your Chaos Dwarf blockers first, and you try to get that Mighty mm. Blow Claw combination, mm-hmm. yeah. and you build up. You take a season of losses, you build up, mm-hmm. and then you become scary. Uh, well, in this case, he did go for the two guard first, it looks like, but I, I want to say that this was, okay, what is the least amount of guard I can get away with and still have a chance of winning games? I think that's what he did here. This is also the reason why he's in the middle of the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and on that topic, he has a record of 4, 2, and 1. Uh, he has... I don't have the list of who he... I didn't... I did not include in my notes who people have lost to. So, you know, let's let's figure that out live. Let's do it live. We already, <laughs> we already found out he beat the leading dwarves. So... He tied against Really Famous Medics, which is a Chaos team. He tied against the Rottingham Rockers, which is a Nurgle team. He uh, lost first to Gotti, the Lizards. Mm-hmm. Lost against yeah. Lizards, and... He won Th- versus... Does he only the... have one loss? He only has one loss. Yes. And yet he's in lost. the middle of the pack. Two draw... Actually, no. He actually has a decent record. It's just that the people at the top are doing really, really good. Yep. Let's go to the Nulls and actually look at this. Let's go where, sorry? 
the next team, the Norse. Oh, you the Norse, worship you chaos. You worship chaos. This team um, is special. Shut up. That's the team mod. <laughs> Uh, this team uh, took a beat in, I Now, think. I'm pretty sure there are more players on here the last time I looked. <laughs> Either he has fired a lot of them because he's having lots of bye weeks and he wants to get his positions to get the uh, experience, or he has lost a lot of uh, players. He does actually have a bye week this week. So, uh, And he does seem to have all of his positionals, so... I think he did just fire all of his uh, all of his level one linemen. Well, okay then, that's interesting. But uh, let's look at the what he actually has. He he has a block mighty blow yeti. That's really scary. Yeah, that's 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 yeah, that's really scary. Uh, he also has a palming berserker. That's also really scary. Uh, and he has a plus agi runner. This, this, with sure hands, which is also really scary. Yeah, he which... doesn't have lots of level ups except for the like dirty player kicker, Homber Yeti, and uh, his runner. But every level up he has mm -hmm. is a good, scary piece that demands mm -hmm. respect. Yeah, like I know not all Norse players like the runner, but this is a really good player. There is nothing wrong with his runner. Basically, it's a ghoul which got an edgy up, which got dauntless. Which got block, which got sure hands, and you know it's the same amount of levels, but yeah. even better. You know, there's nothing wrong with him. Mm -hmm. it's, like it's yeah, just, it's a really, it's a really solid player. Um, yeah. And the team has murder power. Like all it really needs is like a a little more development on the ults. I think doesn't really need it. The only thing this team needs is a okay. bench. The only thing it wants, other than a bench, is a little more development on the ults. Yeah, ideally you want to get strength upon elves. Mm-hmm. But failing that, but... like, both of these elves are forced to be away from leveling. I'm sure he wants block on Harry Uncle. Uh, I'm not sure what I would take on successful baldness gear. Uh, I do not play Norse, so... Usually, if you want to be smart about it, you get guard because Norse has a huge problem with, like, who am I going to get guard on? All of your strength... Access players are frenzy players, so mm -hmm. getting guards on one of them is actually really bad. Your berserkers usually are lying half of the game mm -hmm. flat on their face because of piling on. So mm -hmm. having guards on them is not really a useful skill. That so mostly make... what mm -hmm. most Norse coaches would do is get like block guard on the ill for this first, mm -hmm. and then yeah. maybe get like um, juggernaut and um, wrestle and mm -hmm. make them into like dedicated surface. Yeah. I also gonna... having guards on Yeti. Uh... Guard on the Yeti is mm -hmm. also a very uh, much taken tactic, but of course, with a Yeti which has block, you might want to go full crazy and get piling on them, and, you know, it's just a good choice you uh, make. I mean, you could just make, have a Claw Palmer straight up, you're right. Uh, you don't really need Juggernaut that much because you have block, so... I don't know, either Guard or... I think Guard is still really good on this player, though. All so... foreigners need Guards, that's simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I know some play people like to turn ulfs into sur dedicated surfers as well. Or at least turn an ulf into a dedicated surfer. They can um, be both. I could, I mean, all it really needs is stand firm and juggernaut for that. So, pick pick just, one of those up just, on the way to getting guard. Just imagine, though, like, they can get guards, juggernaut, mm -hmm. stand firm all those things, and they can just be just effective at both roles. Mm -hmm. The only thing they might need, which uh, most uh, straightforward players do not have, is a break tackle. Break tackle on ulves is actually not a bad idea. Really? Oh, I you mean, know what? This yeti should have break tackle. <laughs> they're movement 6, so they're going to be very mobile. Mm -hmm. You want to use them for surfing, you want to use them mm -hmm. to, like... Do they mobile guarding uh, route, and they are the only two pieces which can reliably get guards. Mm -hmm. So having break tackle on Ulf is really not a bad idea. Yeah, no, makes it it makes sense. Get get that break tackle on there. Uh, so in terms of record, this team is five one and one. I believe it is in it is uh, tied for third place overall uh, with sixteen passes. points. 
Yep, with the Pantheon Passers. Their one loss is against, uh, let's see, the Cowboy Dwarfs, the first place team. So, you know, they got to be happy that there's that second place option because they aren't going to win any ties there. Yep. Uh, they also tied against, uh, who the heck are the Ordos Incompetent? No, that's a that must be a Greenhorn game. Yeah. Yeah, they tried to get anyway, some high fivers. I want to go to the next team because I see something very fun. Uh, the Rottingham Rotters, Rock Rockers. Sorry, da every time. Rock you like <laughs> a hurricane. The Rockers who drop. Uh, yeah, only three Nurgle Warriors though. That's a shame. Actually, Sakari is a tongue twister for you. Drakker is rotting, Drakker is rotting, Drakker is rotting, keep saying it. What? <laughs> the rocker is rotting, keep saying it ten times after each other really fast. No, I don't think so. I have a hard <laughs> enough time talking without trying to say tongue twisters. Um, so, uh, this is a really good looking Nurgle team, and despite it being a Nurgle team, it's doing really well. Um... The Beast of Nurgle has guard and almost has its second level up for... I would take Stand Firm, but maybe Claw if you just want to go full murder with it. Uh... <laughs> yeah, uh, what I actually am finding very interesting about the Steam is the fact that they have a Strength 5 Nurgle Warrior. Yeah, uh, which normally I wouldn't, I would not acknowledge, but you know... In this in this case, since we are doing the full review, like why would you not? We, we, can, oh, we yeah, can't yeah, yeah, ignore yeah, yeah. that because it hasn't leveled up. But I mean, yeah, true. Okay, I would probably take tentacles straight away on this, and you'd need to take tentacles as a strength five Nurgle warrior. But it's yeah, a matter of when going, you take it, though. I am going to just do a, a shout out here, like Spirit Crush, please level up your players so we can like review them. Mm -hmm. It's not nice, just like thinking of like hmm, what could he potentially mm -hmm. get we all know that you are going to get either tentacles or block it's not a surprise yeah you don't need to like faint the other coaches into like some sort of a false sense of like who what's he going to get is he going to get mighty blow is he going I... to get claws nobody knows we kind of know <laughs> i mean in fairness i'm guilty of this sometimes as well usually it's because i want to sit on the, de the decision i'm not 100 percent sure what i'm going to take uh in this case, I think there is a real argument here for taking block or tentacles first. So I can see sitting on it for that reason. Gee, I don't know what I'll, I want. I'll wait and decide later. Uh, but uh, the that, argument that's neither is nor very, there. very simple, though. True enough. Uh, the argument I... goes as follows. <laughs> Do you want to win this season, or do you want to develop this season? If you want to win this season, go for the tentacles. If you want to develop this season, go for the block. So, so, so far, it looks like he wants to win this season. Uh, so, on that topic, uh, the other two developed Nurgle Warriors, Block Mighty Blow and Block Guard. He has a kicker, and he has a dirty player. Uh, and he has three out of four Pestigors. I think probably he's he has enough money to buy the, a fourth Pestigore, but I think he'll probably hold off on that for a while until he's leveled up his third one. Yeah, that's actually really possible. Mm -hmm. And also likely what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the things I like about this team? The things I like about this team is the early block of the Chaos Warrior, the God about the Beast, uh, the mighty blow on the Pestigor, which mm -hmm. is about to level, uh, like, one more hit and he can get Claw. Yep. And the fact he has 210k in the bank, which you really should use to buy another Pestigor whenever he can. Um, like, the problem is you don't want too many rookie Pestigors at one time. You can develop well, we them are, faster if you we can. Are, we are in, like, the half season right now, right? Mm -hmm. It might be interesting to, like, check out if the market, the player market has, yeah. like, any Pestigors. That's a very interesting point. Uh, I generally don't know, and I'm not going to check this time, but I highly recommend you check Spirit Crusher. Uh, I will also say there might be a concern for t TV bloating. Uh, that Pestigore, it does add 80k to the team value, so it is something you need to consider when playing Neural. Uh, anyway...
His uh, win rate is 5-2-0. and oh, No losses at all. Only a single point behind the first place team. And again, this is a Nurgle team. This could easily be a first season Nurgle team that gets into playoffs. When does that happen? For? Very, very, <laughs> very, very possible. Um, uh, yeah, we do know that like the first time a Chaos team got to the finals, they actually <laughs> really won the thing, so... It's not a yeah. bad thing to say. But it's in fairness, that was Sage, so... Maybe you not mean, a fair comparison. Blood blood you mean the best Blood Blood player ever? Uh, one of them, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, the two ties were against Pantheon pa Passers, uh, el so Elves, and against Lich's Skull Crushers, so Chaos Dwarves. These are very different teams <laughs> that were both draws. And it's 1-0 or 1-1 in every single game. So the defense game is strong here. It is pretty much really strong, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so... Uh, unless you have something else to add for the Rockers, let's uh, move on to the next one. Which is going to be the Hufflepuff Heroes, coached by Wu Gambito. The guy who's able to level all his Tomb Guardians at the same time and actually get an agility up skeleton. No I'm duffers sort of in jealous. these hu Hufflepuffers. <laughs> okay but then. This team this season is not having a great season. Mm -hmm. It's sitting at a two wins and five losses streak. Uh, I mean, it's having a great season for development. Just, it, 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 they're, they're building clearly for a good next season. This is the thing about Kemri, mainly when you go play higher up, though. You're mm -hmm. going to be able to stall out a lot. You're going to be able to get a lot of draws. Mm -hmm. but winning a match with Agility 2 is... It takes luck. Well, I'm going to be fair up with you. It takes luck. It doesn't really take skill. Well, that's <laughs> all. Well, he's building his own throw rot, so, you know, he'll probably be fine. Um, yeah, and the thing is, he's also building his own Tomb Guardian, for that matter. Hmm. The, the Tomb Guardians are going to be really big, but as I have known from building a lot of Tomb Guardians already, having a Tomb Guardian which is already, like, level 5 mm -hmm. myself, they die easily. <laughs> they yeah. die really easily. Decay hurts. And if you have a, like, nicely developed Team Guardian squad, but if you lose mm -hmm. one, you can like focus on building him up again and like have the rest carry them. Mm -hmm. It's not bad because you still have three good tomb guardians and one working. The working can you know take like an extra punch or something, mm -hmm. and you don't really mind. But if you do not have that like core of good tomb guardians, it really hurts losing one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I'm looking at this team, and the more I look at it, the more I'm thinking the reason they haven't w won many games is. Probably because all of their SPP is on the Tomb Guardians. If you look, they have scored uh, three times, uh, unless a Tomb Guardian has scored, which is admittedly a possibility. And all of the other SPP they have on everything that's not a Tomb Guardian is from MVPs. Well, to be fair, that's how I level my team. I also try to get Tomb Guardian touchdowns. Mm -hmm. I lose a few games because of it, but you need to do it because of development. Because yeah, otherwise I mean, you're going to fall behind. I mean, you're right. You want to develop the Tomb Guardians as fast as possible. But probably you would be well served to get a level on your Blitz Raws, too. My Blitz Raws are the most developed ones in the, <laughs> the league. So I don't have that issue right now. They're also the two only Blitz Raws in the mm -hmm. league to have a plus one strength. Yeah, but... uh. Wagambino does have that issue. Both of the Blitz Raws have 5 out of 6 SPP right now. The only tip I can give about that is like if you try to force Tomb Guardian touchdowns, the Blitz Raws really need to get pumped mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Tackle as well is fairly important, at least a little bit of it. Like the really thing which you should be doing now is to, to get that Mighty Blow going. Mm -hmm. The moment that starts kicking off, they kind of like self maintain mm -hmm. them. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense to me. And uh, just for record keeping purposes, two wins, zero draws, and five losses. Uh, four Looks touchdowns like. scored total. So I guess there was a Tomb Guardian touchdown. 
Uh, well, I did say that the racket was uh, dirty. And the two players, they lost against Organized Crime. Uh, the Ogre team. <laughs> that always stands out. The two teams they won against. Uh, let's see. They have a 0-0 zero -zero game versus the Rottingham Ro Rockers. That must have been a Greenhorn. Uh, let's see, let's see. They've won against really famous medics. And the other one is a bye game. Yep. Either way, we'll, we'll look at that when we will look mm -hmm. at the, uh, you know, the uh, leaderboard. Let's get into the next team. Yep. Next team. What is the next team? The High Fivers. Coached by Uber the Nuber. We high five with claws! I guess the two werewolves do the high fives. That would make sense. Uh, Wow, why do werewolves always develop so quickly? <laughs> uh, because they're werewolves. They're a movement eight, so they get quick touchdowns like Bill Santos. But unlike Bill Santos, they're jump three, so you know they get the ball. They score touchdowns and they hurt people. It's simple. Also, they're faster. Yeah, werewolves are the ideal piece to develop really quickly. And if you can get one or two doubles, more to you. I mm -hmm. actually do not understand why we have more rebel coaches. Which try to like get the like all around dream, which this team is having, and get like a agility of mighty blow werewolf, and you know, for example, Bud Bundy. Mm -hmm. I would s recycle him. Like he has enough money, just fire the guy and get another werewolf. If you're still building, why not? Mm. The chances of getting a double and getting mighty blow and being able to even develop even quick clash I... is just a bit of a taking. I think I would, uh, I would wait, I, I actually agree with what you're saying, but I think I would wait for one more level, uh, and a big part of that is just because this is the only tackle on the whole team. <laughs> well, if he waits for one more level, and if it's double success, he can just fire him and mm -hmm. try again. Yeah, you're right, but no also reason. hopefully by that point you have tackle on like a zombie or a white or something. A white <laughs> A Maybe it's cool, actually. It's clearly a sacker. Get it on the white. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. uh, flesh golems are pretty new. All of the SPV has been funneled into the werewolves, so like this whole team is pretty fresh, other than the werewolves. Um, I do like the one white, the one sacker white, though. I must say. And uh, there's 13 players, so with one dirty player, so you know there's fouling going on. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Either way, what is this record? Uh, the record is 3 2 and 2, which puts him at 11 points. Probably not going to take first place, but still has a chance to get second. Uh, well, he, uh, does uh, have, it, he does have a claw, mighty blow, edge up werewolf, so that thing is going to level exact, like no tomorrow. Exactly. Uh, two kills inflicted. Hmm, I wonder who he killed. Uh,. And let's see, his losses were again. He he drew organized crime. Man, I I have words to say about that, but we aren't there yet. Uh, he lost against uh, Lucius Skull Crushers, and against really famous medics. Either way, mm -hmm. and tragedy plus t wait is tragedy plus time even still in the. Lee, I thought they were gone. I am looking at the next team already, cause we need okay. to keep them now, but at least. Yeah, right. Let's let's move on. We have Yurlis we'll, Eddie by Tsukari. We'll pick up the pace a little bit. That's that's my bad. Uh, yeah, this team has taken a really bad beating. Uh, two or three weeks ago, they were looking amazing with a block score and lot lots of nice looking Saurus, but then they started dying. Like this is well, a new. This is a new cross, one, and it immediately got move busted. There's one big shout out here: is the fact that they already had all their bye weeks. There's a total of like three mm -hmm. bye weeks per team, and most teams only had one bye week. So this team has had lots of free weeks. Then yep. got a really bad beating by Nurgle, which are like recovering from right now. Mm -hmm. The Croxigor is probably going to get fired again the mm -hmm. moment he gets some money on hand. But, but and this is a big but. He has a plus one strength orders, which is a start of a great thing. Yep. Uh, now he just, he needs to replace his Croc score again, pretty much, which sucks. But, uh, I'm, I, I'm sure he'll do it. And, like, he has the pieces for making this a good team, but he's, and, 
but he's probably not going to he's probably going to really struggle to get into the top four or the top two slots for that playoff spot well to be fair lizard teams these days have had a really tough um like time i don't really remember a lot of Phyllis seems actually have an easing time right now in the rebel uh general. yeah this season has been really harsh for lizard teams all over uh not which is something that i am honestly not too i can't really complain about but you know that's that's a personal that's a personal thing uh <laughs> So, uh, taking away the three bye weeks, uh, he has a 50-50 record for wins and losses. Uh, and I think one of those is against the Ogre team as well, so... Uh, yeah. No, actually I was wrong. He's playing Ogres this week. But this Ogre team does not have a bad record, to be fair. It like, really doesn't. You know, for an Ogre team, let's say it like that, but for an Ogre team, they really don't have a bad record. Uh, yeah. They really don't, but again, we'll talk about that when we get to them. Um, oh, uh, hey, we've gotten to them. <laughs> Ogre so crime. crime. Six ogres, no snotlings. Four out of, out of six ogres have break tackle. Four out of six have guard. One has strength up, and one has block. Still, Seconds. still a little bit roll uh, low on the rerolls. Uh, probably wants a probably well, I mean it's ogres. He could go up to six, but probably wants like four or five. Yeah, this is the uh, break tackle ogre mm -hmm. team. Like in general, I like this team, but they're not as awesome as the um, other ogre team, which we will review pretty soon. The um, you know, yeah, ogre all stars. I like <laughs> I like Raven Pose ogre team better, but you cannot they have deny ridiculous pieces. Spigasaurus has been doing work with this team. He has a record of 2, 1, and 4. And now, in fairness, one of those wins is a bye week. But take that away, and he still has like 4 points that he earned himself. Which sounds like not a lot, <laughs> but he is in serious contention for the Stunty Cup. Yeah, besides the uh, Ogre teams and, you know, the other Stunty teams, they were going to have one Stunty team at least join the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Like, the best Stunty team will join the playoffs, and if the best Stunty team actually wins the playoffs, then Kejiru Saturday will eat his own shoe. Uh, I th I th wait, I thought... I thought Metal said that. Metal, no, Metal was... said that Kejiru would eat his own shoe. Oh, okay. I Look, the important part is someone is going to eat their shoe if Stunties win. Yes, so we need to eat. And we need somebody to win with the Stunties. Yep. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So, uh, as we already mentioned, the one team that Spigasaurus did win against was the Kepri. Uh, they, yeah. they just sort of d destroyed them. Uh, but they have a few matches coming up that are looking pretty good for them. Uh, I'll mention it here because they don't really factor into the regular playoff, uh, playoff chances talk. They're Stundy Cup or Bust. So, <clears throat> they have Sukari up next, as I said, and that could be a good match for them because Sukari is looking pretty beat up. And they are playing Goblins later on as well, and that could be a real swing match for them. It's going to be interesting, but I am looking at one of the top contenders of the division right now, which is the Pantheon Patsis. Uh, yep. The other team tied for third place. Go forth, my champions, and claim the Orb of Zot. Uh, they have a really hefty bank. Yeah, this team might be looking at, like, keeping a bank for some reason, but it's not for, like, the market, because there's no market yet for mm -hmm. Noel their first season. Unfortunately but... not. Uh, or maybe fortunately, because this team is already looking pretty damn good without buying any special players. Well, I mean, they can get another catcher for some more speeds, they can give him a uh, dodge and block, mm -hmm. they are developing their other catchers will be amazing, they have an amazing thrower. One yeah. of their, like, blitzes mm -hmm. is a uh, sidestep blotch fence, so, you know, mm -hmm. you're never going to touch that guy with a uh, mighty blow claw pumper, mm -hmm. because you cannot pump him, ever. Mm -hmm. Two AG5 catchers, really... one of which has he's... wrestle. He's getting a really good team. Like, it's a couple more level ups, and it's hard to imagine you, you'll be able to keep the ball safe against this team. The only way you'd be able to do it is just pu pure strength 
guard spam. So, you know, dwarves. Um, Pretty but, much. Uh, yeah, like, this This is a really solid-looking team, and they have had, they have had, I want to say, uh, no. I'm thinking of the other pro-elf team. Uh, but, th- all the same, they have a good record, 4-2-1. and one. Their one loss was against, uh, let's see, was it, <clears throat> no, was against Sukari, actually. Uh, which, honestly, if you're going to have one loss, this is probably a good loss to have, because it's against someone who's unlikely to be in competition for the playoff spot. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Uh, no, this team is looking very special, by the way. Just uh, heads up. Uh, we met the ball spawn, and now we are on in this team. Still only five. He started with six vampires, right? Uh, no, he started with four, I think. Uh, okay. I... He's, he's slightly building up his roster, but he needs to fire his, like, one SPP movement five vampire and mm. maybe get rid of the uh, mingled guy if yeah, he doesn't you... get player. So I do he... like <laughs> one thing about this team, which is really special. Uh, and what would that be? Oh, actually, I see it. Thick skull. Do you know why this is so interesting? <laughs> uh, why don't you go ahead and say it? <laughs> well, you know that the vampire, when they bite their own players, they get a free um, armor uh, like a break, and they mm -hmm. have their old injury table, right? Yep. It's an injury table without mighty blow, so, you know, the chances of getting casualty is really rare but uh, with the thick skull actually, you have more chances of it going stunned rather than like KO. Uh, it caps out at uh, KO as well so if it's a casualty it always goes to KO but uh, no. yeah hmm? yeah, no, it can actually go or, into casualty. No, you're right, it can be a badly hurt but it can't be worse than badly hurt yes, it will not, never go worse mm -hmm. than badly hurt but if they go knockout Unlike the roll of, I think it's a 9 something, it will be a stun mm -hmm. instead, which is a good thing to have. I mean, I like this for the, the meme, but honestly, I do think Guard is still a better pick on a double for a thrall. Yeah, that's the thing I sort of like, um, find not interesting mm -hmm. about. Like, if it was a normal pickup, it would be fucking amazing, but right now it's a double pickup, and like, what? Dick Skull, Mighty Blow, are you just trying to mm -hmm. be meme -y? You could have had three guards by now. Yeah. Uh, although it's worth saying, every single lo Thrall level up on here is a freaking double. Yeah, uh, I do have to say that King of the Cosmos does like to play the Dream Me Machine, so... Mm-hmm. Uh... Sure hands past Vampire as well. Yeah, they're this, passing Vampire. This team is weird. <laughs> uh, Either way... Either What's way, their record say? Uh, their record is two zero and five, which is maybe not too surprising. Uh, well, he picked he picked up from his like very terrible start, mm -hmm. which is a nice thing to see because he had like a painful start. Yeah, I'm pretty sure nice he lost a vampire in his first game. Uh, and his wins are against uh, well, that is a bye week, and that is organized crime. So he beat the ogres. That's nice. Mm -hmm. At least you're better than a stunty team. <laughs> they are stunty team. No, vampires are not stunty. They're still a tier 2 plus team. <laughs> I mean, I've heard arguments that vampires are actually pretty good at when they're really developed, but it's like, getting there is like a, it's pretty much impossible is the thing, right? Uh, anyway, oh, let's move on. Really famous medics. Apoc Apothecary Enforcers. Uh, I by, think I by, get the joke. <laughs> by Can't Here. Can't Table Me Here. I can't table me here. <laughs> so, okay. the development on this team is really weird. Um, but I Dr. Would House be... went for Dodge because he had a double and Dodge mm -hmm. is, is killing agility. And player. like... He's got to get a lot of chaos warrior though. Du doubles aside, he has gone 
Mighty Blow first on every Chaos Warrior, and he's gone Claw first on all but one Beast Man. Uh, yeah, I do not mind going Claw first and then Mighty Blow, but what really irks my eye is the fact that he went Claw and then Block. Mm -hmm. I don't what? mind <laughs> doing Claw first once or twice, but I think there's a limit, and this is past the, it. This theme is another meme dream. Uh, but it does have Nose Dice's favorite uh, player. I'll mention it since he's not here. The catch... Catcher, Mighty Blow, Dr. Pain, Chaos Warrior. <laughs> oh, Dr. Pain, why are you roll, so weird? Roll a couple more you... roll a couple more doubles and I'm sure Iron Master will buy it from you. <laughs> Give him like nerves of steel, edgy up, and make him like the best catch mm -hmm. ever or something. Yes, oh. exactly. Uh, didn't this team have a Minotaur and it died? Like, I feel like this is the second Minotaur. Uh... This is Medicine number two. Well, it ha it's only played two matches, so it's definitely not a... It, it's definitely new, in any case. I think we are also dealing with a special or a new Koshi, the way... The records um, also show that he has like three wins, one draw, and three losses, mm -hmm. so it's really down the middle. I mean, his like record this, is not that bad, that... so it could be a new coach, but I think he might also just be sort of, sort of screwing around. Sort of quirky. Yeah, like I don't think this is a serious attempt to develop chaos properly. At least not in a shorter time span. Maybe three seasons from now, it'll be an amazing team. No, uh, still, it's, but... still, it's a weird way of going around mm -hmm. things like you have a certain order, which is already proven to be the best order, and this is not the one. Uh, in, indeed. Uh, let's see. They have also played against uh, the Ogres, so that's one of their wins. That'll be over here. Uh, oh, looks like they just played against Goblins? Oh yeah, no, that was their last game. Uh, we're, we'll talk about that one, that in a minute. But uh, yeah, they lost. One of their losses was against the Gobbles Gobbles. Well, our next team that we have to review, so this could be a took time to jump over. Is Gobble Gobbles? Uh, yeah. Uh, if I can find it, because there's so there it is. So this was a late addition to the season. This team has played a grand total of three games. For having three games in, I mean, they don't have lots of the period, but you know, a couple things mm -hmm. isn't going to anyway. Interesting is that they actually are doing a Reaper build and only have one troll. Uh, I yep. sort of like this. They and have... they have also they also have a sneaky git now. Mm -hmm. I don't really so like taking a sneaky git first on goblins, but I mean, sure, if if you're going to foul every turn, you may as well go all the way for it. The sneaky gits, or like two sneaky gits in my case, because if you haven't mm -hmm. seen my fall team yet, Chaos of Blue, I have two sneaky gits, allow you to foul every turn with Reckless Abandoning. <laughs> yeah. So assists? Well, the thing we don't is... care about the assists, we care about the extra armor break. The thing with goblins, though, is that you can do that anyway. You don't need sneaky git to enable you to do it. You take sneaky git yeah. on a player who already has dirty player, because then you can foul with Abandon with but... them. If you're going to do shitty fouls, you might as well get a shitty skill to, like, stop shitty fouling from being sent off. True enough. And it is a Ripper build, which I love. Um, he, honestly, he might have been able to even pull off a true, a two-troll Ripper build, but, uh, speaking from experience here, that is a little bit harder to, to, uh, land. That one. Yeah. You, you do need to count on your opponents having a certain amount of TV with it. So the amount of load to be in this case. <laughs> mm -hmm. Either way, let's look at the statistics. Although it doesn't really matter for uh, this team. So yeah, this like I said, one zero one and two. Win. Yeah, it's not bad. There... Either way, let's move to the leaderboard uh, then. Actually, I do want to make one quick note for the Stunty Cup as mm -hmm. well. If they right now have a one in three win rate, and because they have, they're playing f fewer games, this team actually has a really good chance of getting the Stunty Cup. Uh, be because the study quake. cup is determined based your qualification for, for it is different determined based on the number of games you've played and not your and not 
it doesn't assume everyone's playing 14 games because it has bye weeks factored in there so that you don't have an advantage for playing bye weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, this team could end up in the playoffs. <laughs> Either way, let's look at the leaderboards. Yeah. Uh, so, we touched on this before. The top three teams right now are Cowboy Dwarfs and then Rottingham Riders. And then top four teams, I guess, because you worship Chaos and... Uh, oh! Huh. Sakura must have played his game. <laughs> uh, he wasn't there before. <laughs> So we have Tsukari at number 4 with the Uralist Eddie, then the Pantheon passes, and the Chaos Dwarfs, the Self and Digit Lies are following up down uh, in the middle. Oh! Followed no, by Uber and Uber and his Necromantic, and then we have really famous medics, the mm. true middle tier. Organized crime, not bad, still not uh, going mm. to de get deported, but still going to stay at this division, which is real nice. Awful buff heroes could be doing a little bit better, but still not getting deported, and then in the danger zone is right now mm -hmm. King of the Cosmos and Gobo Gobos, which have to take over the terrible season mm -hmm. of a team which has been by week the whole time. But, you know, mm -hmm. Gobo Gobos, they can do whatever they yeah. want, their goblins. Uh, and I do actually know why it looks like this. is because one of the draws for T-Cells, the Pantheon Passers, actually is a win because it was against the team that dropped out in, like, the second week. The uh, It's not on this list, but Tragedy Plus Time, I believe it was. So yeah, yeah okay. T self actually should be is tied with Gazgul. Uh it just doesn't show it in the records. Okay, but, either so, way. Playoff predictions. Right now, if I look at the roster and look at the level ups, I do think that the Cowboy Dwarfs and the You Worship Chaos have the best chance. Then followed up by the Pantheon passes. Hmm. Um... So I think we're going to have a North team and a dwarf team which are basically the better early game teams going to the playoffs. I, I could see that. Uh, I will also throw Rottingham Rod Rockers in there, actually. It's Nurgle, so it feels weird, but if they keep... If they play against Cowboy Dwarfs in, the last, in their last uh, game of the season, and uh, they're playing against the, the same amount of Sunday teams as well, they'll have a harder ro road for it, but I do think... If they keep up the record they've gotten so far, I think they do actually have a genuine chance of coming in in, in uh, well, in the top two anyway. Maybe not first. The thing is, and you don't have to forget this, I do not think that Chaos Wolf want to go to the uh, like the playoffs already. North maybe not yet as well. Dwarf maybe they can because of the early skills like. Mm -hmm. They're not lot. They're not so like many P, uh, teams which want to go to the mm -hmm. playoffs early on. So, it might be a thing of not wanting to mm -hmm. rather than actually having to. But if we are going to send a few teams, I think it will be the Dwarven and Norse, uh, followed uh, up by the Lizard Man as my dark horse. Well, the Sakari actually has the probably one of the best matchups going forward for getting into the playoffs in terms of the opponents he has left to play. Uh, I say keeping in mind that he's already had all of his bye weeks. Uh, but the problem is that he just... His team is just so beat up. I think he's going to struggle to get the wins that he needs. Uh, other than that, I do agree with you with the Dwarfs and the uh, and the Norse. Uh, they both have one bye week and one stunty game going up. And then they're sort of bashing up against a combination of the middle and... Well, mostly the middle teams. After do not that, take one do not take one stunty team as like a uh, value of actually winning or not. Never underestimate the stunties. Oh, oh, I'm not underestimating it, but like, I but would never underestimate a stunty team. <laughs> but you, well, let's put it this way: dwarves are probably going to beat goblins. Probably is not quite. It is highly probable. We will see what Nuffle says about it. I'd love it. To I'd love it if it didn't happen. It would throw a wrench in everything, which would be amazing, and it would make the goblins do really well for the Stunty Cup, which would be amazing. Um, <laughs> speaking of the Stunty Cup, this is the last thing we'll mention for this division. Uh, the goblins and the ogres, organized crime and gobble gobbles, will actually be playing a match against one another. Uh, still. 
I'm not sure which week that will happen in. I did not think to actually write it down. <clears throat> but it will happen. And that match could well decide who will go into the uh, Stunty Cup's position for for the playoffs. Going, going to be a really important one, folks, and one mm-hmm. you might want to keep your eye on out, out of for. It will actually be a really important game. <laughs> and it's amazing. Okay. Let's okay. go to the next division. Five, yeah. Charlie. Uh, we'll, we'll maybe try to spend a little less time on the first few teams this time. Uh, again, my bad. Have we'll see, we'll see. We will. Uh, we will start with Corn's Glory, 10 coin. My favorite team. Uh, yeah. This, For the glory of Corn. This is a team which had mighty blown everybody. Uh, except for and the two then, tacklers. Yeah. And then the Chaos Warrior and the Beastman died, and he's actually having to rebuy those. Mm hmm. But it, so does, right now it doesn't matter, saying, he already has four SPP on that new Chaos Warrior. Yeah, he's going to get Mighty Blow really soon. And the beautiful thing about the strategy is, like, even though he loses a few people, they're going to keep, keep on leveling, mm-hmm. keep on getting stronger. He actually invested in a 14 reroll because of all the rerolling he has to do. I actually do not fault him for that. It's actually a smart idea. I mean, uh, he, he has no block, so sure. He's just going for the kill team, and I think in three seasons, this team is going to be Division 1. Uh, yeah, this reminds me a lot of Havoc's Orc team, actually. Uh, this is... except, um... This team he... is Claw Access. Exactly. <laughs> a- exactly. Whereas Havoc struggles to remove players because he doesn't have Claw, uh, this team is gonna just murder everything it touches. It, it might not win every game, but it will kill everything. And, and this on the, is why it's a beautiful thing. And on the top of not winning every game, it has a record of 2, 1, and 4. The two teams it won against were uh, Shrek All-Stars, the Ogre team, and Doom Anvils, which I believe is Chaos Dwarfs, actually. Well, I mean, they still need to develop a little bit, so that's normal. Mm-hmm. In this case, I actually would not look at win and losses in this team's case, and I would just look at the SVP gains. And so far this season, they're doing a good job. That is very true. Also, they have inflicted in seven games, they have inflicted 82 injuries, 19 casualties, and one kill. That's a lot for a team like that. There's only one team that can do more injuries, and it's a dirty player right off the bat team. Yeah. Because the unpopular opinion that Dirty Player is a more deadly skill than Mighty Blow is a fact. I mean... You can't... You can foul on a 2+, plus. you can't Mighty Blow on a 2+. plus. It's always, at best, it's always going to be like a 60% chance to break armor. This is why we are team foul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, then. Either way, what's next up on the schedule? Uh... That would be Busanda with his lizard men, uh, Kantakeros Crutatians. Try it again. Kantakeros Crutatians. That's more like it. Uh, damn kids, get off my supercontinent! What so, do we uh, have here as for level ups? There's an almost natural one turner. That's and nice. uh, three Bloxaurus and a Guard Crocs. I mean, this is sort of typical lizard development. Has, probably hasn't lost too many lizards. It's been ha- struggling a little bit to get SVP on Saurus, but not excessively. Yeah, I mean, the real issue here is that the uh, old Saurus, which are not leveled yet, don't mm-hmm. have a single point of SVP. Uh, yeah, that that is an issue. But, uh, you know, he's be- despite that, he has been performing pretty well. In some ways, this actually reminds me a lot of Wave's team from last season. I uh, think he's going to have uh, three really developed sources at the end mm-hmm. of the three rookies. Only, this team is much more TV efficient than Wave's was, because he doesn't have all that skink float. 
He might have been fighting skinks, which is not a bad idea sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. If you don't roll a level up by your third level on a skink, fire him. What does this like uh, win and loss uh, ratio uh, say? Five, one, and one, which puts him in third place overall. Uh, which is actually like so. Yeah, he's actually been doing pretty damn good. Uh, and his uh, his one loss. Uh, well, his tie was against the Grungy Desserts, which is Nurgle, I think. It might be undead. Yep. No, no, it's Nurgle. Uh, and his loss was against, uh, if I can find it here, the, no, the Remnant of the Franks? That's, that's gotta be a, uh, bye week. Not a bye week, sorry, a, damn it. Greenhorn game. He lost against Ironforge, 0-1, that's right beside it. Uh, oh, this was a conceit win. Did he miss the first week? I don't remember that. Hmm. Interesting. Either way, I'm looking at the next team, Pro and Apology, which is looking really interesting if you know Soul of Dragonfire's Rebel history. Uh, y'all ready for this? Uh, so I don't know his Rebel history. <laughs> Care to He's elaborate? Last... His North Steam last season in Ariel uh, Division 1 ended with two alive positionals. All uh... of the rest of the team was either killed or just like nailed until no repair. Okay, so I immediately understand the context then. Um, Souls of Dragonfire plays amazingly risky with AV7, gets silly injuries like double niggles and stuff like that, but he never fires a play and keeps on going with them. Uh, well, but he, 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 does, he, does, he does have two kickers, still. He does get loads of success with them and always wins. I do not know why in hell's name he has a double kicker. I mean, presumably, it's because he wanted to fire the move busted one, but he still hasn't done it. Because it was like this last week as well. I mean, I think he might just hold on to him, like, eh, he can take a punch. I guess. I mean, I guess, just lineman, du lineman duty until he gets murdered. I can see that. I mean, this team is prone to getting hit a lot anyway, mm -hmm. so might as well. Uh, but, just aside from getting murdered, this is a really solid looking team with a ton of development. Uh, two only, guard blitzers. They have only lost once. Mm. Tons of blodge as well. Sacker, and do you know, tackle. Do you know who they lost to? Uh, yep, but uh, we aren't quite there yet. <laughs> only a single loss, and uh, An they tend ball. they tend to win big, like. They only have uh, they only have a single win where they won by a single point. Only one. It's four zero and four two and five zero and three one and five zero and it's just they score like mad every single game and they don't get usually they don't get scored on much in retaliation. It's kind of amazing. Okay. I am up to the next team, and I'm sort of amazed. Uh, the Merry Ballers. Bye. No, Bye. say hello to my little friends. Oh, is it? Oh, I skipped over them. Damn. I need to pay better attention. This team's important. Yes, uh, because they have a dodge sneaky gets loony. Yeah. What's up with that? Uh, well, it leveled up twice. Um... I will say this for his team, he is be getting his MVPs in the right place. Yeah, but he needs to start firing them and recycling them to actually get the dreams. Uh, you are very correct. But also, he doesn't have any money because he keeps losing uh, players. Like, the important players. And he used to have an app, he fired it because I told him to. Uh, and I still agree with that. But his luck has been terrible on injury rolls. I mean, frankly, the apple wouldn't have helped. <laughs> But to be fair, I'm actually am having an apple, but it depends really. You want to have an apple whenever you have a player which is worth saving, and right now there is not a single player worth saving in the team. Exactly, that's the thing, right? You don't want to apple on goblins until you have a player that you want to actually apple. Usually, that means the troll hits level three or four, uh, but it can also mean getting a doubles on a secret weapon. 
Or agility up. That one too. Let's see what these white loonies have uh, done. Uh, he, is one not one, he is not one. He is not one. Wait. Yeah, he has not he won, has a won a single game. He that... has won a single game in the Greenhorn Cup, and he has not won a single game in the season. Mm hmm. He has killed three players, though. I guess there's a three wins in Goblin Books. I mean, pretty much, yeah. So he has four wins and ten losses. Mm hmm. Need to start winning again soon. Unfortunately, probably not in contention for the, stu for the Stunty Cup. But not every stunty team we cover can be in contention for the stunty cup. And we still have eight games to go, so, you know, all that could yeah. happen. Yeah, anything could happen, but it, it probably won't. Uh, still, this team has the ability to play spoiler just on pure murder power, uh, with the yeah. number of kills it has made. I am looking at Team Eddie Bowers now from uh, Formosus. Uh, yes, the Kislev team. Which has been on vacation for a few weeks now, so they have, like, lost one or two games, but uh, they did one at mm -hmm. They did one in admin in time, so they're not getting kicked or anything. It's just like they mm -hmm. just lost a few games because of, you know, vacation. Mm -hmm. It happens. And, uh, honestly, I don't know if this looks like a good Kislev team or not. It doesn't look bad, but, uh... Well, it, one of the things you really want to have on your right is, is block... Mm -hmm. You want to get dodge on the catches so that's all fine. Wrestle on linemen, perfect. Uh, there's nothing much I can really add to it. Like his fresh give team, mm -hmm. which hasn't done a lot yet. Let's it hope that when he gets back, he actually mm -hmm. is able to continue with it. Because right now, it's just going to get, you know, nothing. Because he's not playing. Mm -hmm. what, one can only hope. Uh, he's probably not in playoff contention, but he can definitely develop his team a lot. And he can maybe play spoiler. Uh, the two games he did win were against uh iron's forge the dwarf yeah the dwarf team and uh say hello to my little friends the goblins yep yeah anyway let's go to the team which really matters in this division somebody once told me the world <laughs> all star but all the lyrics are ogres <laughs> Get your game on, go play. You know that's not play actually now. true. Go the lyrics are clearly the show one. Get the lyrics breaks. are clearly knoblars. <laughs> what the hell? He is a blotch ogre. So yeah, uh, there's a blotch ogre. There's a pylon block ogre with a niggle. There's a guard ogre with uh, armor bust. There's a plus agility ogre. Uh, and there's lots of of snotlings. With, oh uh, my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Still oh building up. Oh my god! Still building up rebels. You are, <laughs> you are missing something huge right now. Uh, what am I missing? Say hello to my little friends. Have killed a block ogre. Wait. Ogre the shed is a new ogre. Which did not have block, but he has his PP, so it might have been from an earlier game. Over, are you yes. sure? He had three. Uh, he had yeah, three. that it has four matches. He has had three block ogres. No, he didn't. Yeah, he had three of them at some point. So no, one he of didn't. Them must have died. <laughs> he he only ever had the two block ogres. I'm quite I'm quite sure of this. I've been keeping close tabs on this team. Okay, maybe I'm a little bit being a little bit too enthusiastic in that. Uh, uh that's fine. I've I've made bigger mistakes than that just in the last hour. Or so, uh, oh, but well. yeah, uh, I love felt... this team. I just wish I just wish Raven. It's not even that Raven Poe is playing badly. He's playing quite well. It's just his luck has been terrible. He has been getting statistically improbable the amount of boneheading that has been going on for him. Well, to be fair, I don't think he really plays to win as well. I mean, if you're playing Stunty, you're not playing to win. Uh, having said that, he does have two wins. So, uh, yeah. Um, he he could end up in the uh, Stunty Cup position as well. Although, I do think the two Stunty teams from 5C, or 5B rather, have a better chance of it. But a couple lucky wins, like all it takes. It doesn't take that much for him to get there, right? 
like one or two lucky wins and he will be in hotly contesting that position pretty much yeah and uh incidentally the game the games he won were against uh say hello to my little friends and uh where's the other one the wait I'm only seeing one win. But it says he has two wins. Oh, Doom Anvils! He beat Doom Anvils, the Chaos Dwarves. Okay, yeah. On that note, let's move on to the not Chaos Dwarves. The Normal Dwarves, Iron Forge. Iron sharpens iron and breaks you. They have... A blotch blitzer and a blotch runner. Compared and... to the blotch longbeard, I actually like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like blodge on both of. I like dodge on both of these players. I don't like that both of the runners took block first. Uh, but I mean, it's not a bad move. I I just don't like it. Uh, he's going guard first and then straight into stand firm. I mean. There's an actual an argument for this, because having the, that stand firm on a couple long beard is really useful. But it also slows in your development a lot, so I don't really like it. I prefer taking guard into Mighty Blow. Uh, but the elephant in the room, I think, is the level 4 Troll Slayer. Which I'm a huge fan of. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have any doubles. It doesn't really need any doubles. Well, why does a troll? This is the thing, dude. Does a troll slay any doubles in your eyes? I mean, it's nice to have jump up, but you don't need it. Jump up is on a plus three with a troll slayer, so it's not really that useful. No, you don't have jump up for blocking people from the ground. You have jump up so that you have full movement after you palm someone. Still, it's not ideal. You want to get that on your blitzes, see if anything. As I said, it is not something you need. It's a nice to have. I um, can't follow with the statement, but I do prefer pro. Hmm. Dwarves well, aren't supposed to be lying down on the floor anyway. Well, to each their own. Uh, the one thing that is actually really good on Troll Slayers, uh, and this is a Troll Slayer developed enough that movement would be good on it, but plus strength on any dwarf at all, you have to take every time. Because yeah. dwarves are desperate for it. And it, the Troll Slayer is prob Other than a Blitzer, the Troll Slayer is probably the best player for it to have it on. Because of Dauntless, you can actually face strength 5 people mm -hmm. without uh, with ease then. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, this team actually has a pretty good record. It has 3-1-3. Awesome. Uh, three, three. Uh, well, I guess that... Well, it's okay. Anyway... <laughs> But he's played against all, well, most of the fast teams in the league, so I get the impression that the Traori had a hard time with them. Uh, and now, in going to the second half, I feel like he's going to have an easier time with his remaining games. Speaking of having a good time now, when uh, the next season or like the next games are going to come, let's talk about Jazz Poison and how they are actually going to become a menace pretty soon. This is my favorite not stunty team, and it is a stunty team. So, <laughs> yep, that's about this how that works. <laughs> this is your favorite not stunty stunty team. Exactly. Uh, they have a two headed goblin. They have a plus agility goblin, which is amazing. It is amazing on any team, but is doubly amazing on Underworld because you can t give it big hands, and then it can just pick up the ball anywhere. They have two amazing lion men, which mm -hmm. are able to become good sackers. Yep. They have two amazing blipses, which almost have claw mighty blow. Mm -hmm. And they have a troll, which is almost having his piling on or guard or whatever he's going to get. I think probably not piling on because I think both these blitzers are going to be palmers. One of them for sure. And you don't need you don't need a big guy to be a palmer when you have a good palmer who's not uh, giant and really stupid. You never have enough bump. I mean, there are diminishing returns. <laughs> nah, I don't believe in that. The only pump you can have is all the pump. Okay, it, all the same, I would rather take Tentacle on the next level up over Palm. That's true. If you are saying Goat, you probably would do that. 
Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty cool looking team. Uh, it had a really strong start, but then uh, sort of struggled a little bit more in the middle. But now it has a record of a uh, three one and three, the same as the Iron Forge. So uh, they have a chance to get into the playoffs, but it's gonna be re- it's gonna be pretty hard for them to do it. Yeah, they will need to have a constant streak of winning, but mm-hmm. I do think they might have a chance. Our next team, though, I think is going to be a solid contender for the playoffs. Like, I do not think there's going to be much which is going to stop him. Uh, Capri, do it? Yes, we can! Do not ask for uh, mercy. Coach, you will not receive coach. that. You know, that that motto is a little bit a little bit off message with the name, I think. Um, no, it's... It's... It's it's perfect. Like this team does not show mercy. They have not lost yet. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, McMackey can definitely do it. Uh... He is on a seven win, zero loss, zero draw streak, and I do not think there are much teams in the Rebel which is actually having this streak. Like McMackey is just blowing it mm. home on his team. But a fresh Camry team, there is nothing I can say except for like get those some guards rolling, which do not have mighty blow yet. I mean, one of them is that one of them got an MVP, so that's good. Yeah, he's close, but you know they need to get it. There's no excuse. Uh, Bob the Blocker is actually brand new, so he lost a Tomb Guardian at some point. A dead non-level Tomb Guardian is still not an issue. Mm-hmm. But uh, the rest of his team looks pretty good as well, to be honest. Uh, he has a Palm Tackle Ritz, uh, Blitz Raw. Uh, he has a block kicker for turn throw raw, and he has two dirty players. The two dirty players is probably also one of the things I can say that actually really wins games, because I've had one of uh, those, actually I had three of those, <laughs> mm-hmm. but they win games easily. They really are a good addition to have. Mm-hmm. So we already said that he has a perfect win, win record so far. Uh, the only thing I will add to that is that he has not yet played against uh, Say Hello to My Little Friends. And we were talking earlier about not counting... Do not count Stunty out. It will do terrible things to you if you underestimate them. Uh, but... This is one of those teams. <laughs> but, but he oh. has this record of having played against all of the other teams that are at the top of the leaderboard. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so yeah. It's going to be interesting either way. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on, we can look at uh, the Royal Rumble Boys, A Green's Nurgle team. Uh, yeah, that's a Nurgle team. Uh, this is more like what I would expect Nurgle to look like at the in their first season, struggling to get uh, struggling a bit to get SPP on key positionals. But slowly working their way towards it. And, I mean, the Dirty Player Wrestle feels weird to me. Dirty Player Wrestle on what? Uh, one of the Rodders is Dirty Player Wrestle. Ew. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, what this team really needs is it needs to level up all of these Nurgle Warriors. And also these Pestigors. Like, it doesn't have a good ball carrier, and... Three, five out of six Nurgle warriors. Get some need, needs to get some block on there, and probably rather sooner than later. Uh, probably, yeah. Uh, out of curiosity, do you recall? Was this a team that started with uh, it? It didn't start with zero rerolls, but it started with like one or two, right? The zero riddle team was that, I guess. Yeah. And all Nurgle team standards that actually would do readles is mm-hmm. just like a normal thing to have. It's just the player's too expensive. Yeah, so this team just probably started mm-hmm. with like two rerolls. Okay, I'm just trying to think of like how m- many of these players are new. Uh, probably at least one of the Pestigors, if I had to guess. Maybe two. Uh, but yeah. This is definitely a development team where they just want to get a lot of SVP and maybe murder some of the higher-up teams. Probably not playing for playoffs this season. Uh, and the record is 2-2-3, two, two, which is, is not the worst. Could be better, Jones, of course, but not... John Cena and The Undertaker are going to be champions pretty soon. 
which is uh, ultimately to the Undertaker and John Cena. I, I mean, of course it would be. Um, <laughs> didn't this team used to have a plus movement rotter? Yes. Uh, Shawn Michaels has been removed from the game, sadly. And he now has a Tetchi Triceratops, which I do not think ever has been a wrestler. Yeah, I I'm, well. I'm pretty sure he killed a lizard. Pretty sure that that's what happened there. So, uh, yeah. Actually, he has two lizards. Rogers. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Let's move Let's on. Let's go to Frozen Death Nort. Which, which is, is a necromantic team and not Norse. Yes. Still in the same sort of a boat and we saw them like a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. Still with the uh, safeties. Nice, but not much more development other than that. Mm -hmm. I sort of hoped that this team would start developing a little bit more, to be fair. Um... It is clear that they're scoring a lot with their ghoul, meaning the werewolves aren't getting as much as Fufi as they could be from scoring. Uh, having said that, uh, no, yeah, no, that's a that's a fair assessment. They've been scoring some of the werewolves, but I think probably not enough. And the whites and flash golems are sort of almost where where they're reasonable, where they're good. But really, like these werewolves need to blow way up. I mean, it's, it's Necro. The rest of the team almost yeah. doesn't matter as long as the werewolves are good. Werewolves alive. Uh -huh. uh, having said that, this team is a 3 1 and 3. So, uh, yeah. A middle to back again. Pre pretty middling. Okay, Doom Anvils, coached by Voltron. Chaos Dwarves with a strength of Chaos Walker. Uh, yeah. This team is actually pretty good, but it's not really great for this season. I know that last time I sold off, I'm going to say this, but disagreed with the uh, plus strength Chaos Dwarf blocker. Uh... I still sort of do disagree with it, but I do recognize the fact that Chaos Dwarf teams do need mm -hmm. to strength up. I, no. I don't disagree with Absolute it. It it, hurt, it hurts to give up the claw, but this is I think this is absolutely the right play to have taken the strength up. And it's just a shame. Like you can tell like the SP is really spread around on this team. There's lots of it. It's just spread around so that it doesn't show up in a lot of levels. He's he's definitely been scoring on his bull centaurs as well. Although maybe not as much as he would like. Looks like a lot of MVPs have fallen on Hobgoblins, which isn't great. Uh, but, like, I think you just keep developing this team, and it will be really scary to start the next season with. But it's probably going to struggle to win enough games for playoffs this season. Very, very likely, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and having said that, its record is 3-0-4. Please, that's yes, that good to be fair. Mm -hmm. You could be doing a little bit better, but then again, it's not super easy as a Chaos Dwarf to have a good early season. Mm -hmm. Then again, like his players are all nice split up in this PP. If I were him, I would just like focus on getting all your dwarfs leveled, getting mm -hmm. the mighty power block party going, and in general, just just enjoy the season and build up. It's always yeah. next season. That's what I would do as well. I would want to end the season with all of my Chaos Dwarves having at least one level up. And I would probably want one more level up on both of Bull Centaurs. And then that would be a really good place to start the next season from. Just wreak havoc next season and put the fear of God in other people right mm -hmm. now by getting those things. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just murder your way through the second half of, half of the season. Even if you don't win, you will still have the moral victory. Let's go to the Woodies. Which you want to play this season in the completely opposite direction. Uh, Fast forward, no looking black, La Grand Bleu. The, 
So it took me a really long time to realize this, but it's not grand but bland. Uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm addressing yeah. this now because I've absolutely been saying grand this whole time. <laughs> Mais ce n'est pas un problème que le gland c'est uh, c'est un autre bord uh, pour le. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to try to speak French for French. is a little bit rusty. Either yeah. way, le gland bleu it doesn't mean the, the grand to the big blue. It actually means like mm. the smooth blue or something like that. Yeah. No. Ah. No, I'm just saying my reading comprehension is that bad. <laughs> okay, so anyway, this team. Uh, this is a pretty good wood elf team. Uh, it doesn't have a tree, but it has two uh, level four, no, level three war dancers. Uh, one of them and... is a sacker, and one of them it, it is a runner, basically. It has three catchers. Uh, they also have a very interesting piece. Are you referring to the thrower? The nerves of steel catcher. Uh, yeah, that that is definitely interesting. This actually does it's, feel pretty weird. Like, I feel like wood elves don't need nerves of steel on a catcher. There's an argument it's for it. Basically, a jealousy versus pro elves. Mm -hmm. Let's say, like nerves of steel is nice to have on pro elves. It does help a lot. And having the option of having a nerves of steel, you know, like guys, not bad. It's I like it. But it's a double on this player, and like, there's certainly there are better doubles to take. For a pro elf, uh, wood elf catcher, it's actually mm -hmm. not a bad uh, pick. I would either take nerves of steel or guards, either one of those two. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Well, with nerves of steel, I have to assume that he's going to be the ball carrier when the thrower doesn't have it, because the thing that always occurs to me. Nerves of Steel is much better on a thrower than a catcher, because it's easier to have the catcher somewhere that they aren't marked. At least in theory. In practice, I realize it doesn't always work that way. Yeah, in theory that's true, but that doesn't, you know, always make the mm. case. Uh, still, uh, this team has been doing pretty well for itself. Uh, it has a record of 5-0-2. Putting it in fourth place overall, actually. Uh, but it's a close fourth. So this is a team that definitely has a good chance of jumping up enough to get the second uh, place spot. Although it will require some screw-ups from one of the coaches there. But we'll talk about it later. Uh, yep. Just for the record, though, the two teams they've lost against have been uh, pro and a party. And uh, Jazz Poison. So they seem to struggle a Jazz bit against poison. other agility teams. Yep. On to our last team of the evening, I'd say. Uh, let's... Yeah, looks like it. The Grungy the... Desserts. Staudicus, the no riddle. Oh, hey, look, we have a riddle now. And Nurgle then... Team. And then he immediately lost two positionals. And uh, now he has his three beasts. His mm -hmm. four warriors, his beast with a guard, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Two needles, he's getting there. A St mighty blow, a block, and a wrestle beast. And a dirty player mm -hmm. brother. This is a good team to start your season with. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's seven games into the season, which is about how long it took him to get this. This is, this is slow Nurgle to starting in full force. And that is a good thing about this, though. Like, he is going to probably end last in the season. If I were him, I would just save up all the money, mm -hmm. look at the free agent market, try to build your players, take the losses, just mm -hmm. go next season into a lower division, and just become dangerous then. Well, the problem... Right now, whatever, whatever happens this season is just development. The problem with that theory is he can't save up his money because he still doesn't have enough rerolls. He can take a reroll because it's still like seven or eight matches. It's a lot of cash. Yeah, but... He should, but he is, should try to pick up 300k with the last three matches. At the same time, though, it's already taken him seven matches to get his first two rerolls. I don't think he's going to be able to save up enough to buy that much cool stuff from the market. Uh, and I mean, like, he, I know he's that... He's probably having a bad time and mm. probably will be able to do it right now. 
I mean, like, I know you play Nurgle to, uh, I know you play Nurgle with, for the long game in mind, but, like, this season has been really rough for Stouticus, and if I was in his position, I would probably be considering re-rolling at the end of the season. Uh, having said that, he does still have potential for, uh, for playing spoiler to some of the top teams, so he has, he definitely still has some things to look forward to. Especially if he gets some level ups on these warriors. And uh, in terms of win rate, he has uh, his record is two, one, and four. Uh, it's fine with this team. Like I like I said, like the only thing I see him right now doing is just like developments. Mm -hmm. I really would not like to see him uh, attend something else. I don't think it would be healthy to, to attend something else. I mean, you can pl you can play spoiler by murdering another team, and then you're still developing. Yeah, I mean that's basically how you would develop. Uh, by like, murder. like for instance, he still has yet to play the underworld team. That's a lot of stunty. That if he rolls well, he could murder a lot of players. Either way, I would not count him out just mm -hmm. yet. Indeed, he still has a role to play in this division. Uh, anyway, let's look at... That is the board, not the leaderboard. Let's look at the leaderboard! So, one thing which is going to be my pick anyway, which is McMackey, I've said before, Kemri are going to win everything, and I think for well, this one Kemri coach who's going to win everything, mm -hmm. I would expect McMackey even to do a Sage to win the Super Bowl at this point. Um, I don't know about that, but I do agree. I think Mimaki is almost a lock-in for a playoff position. He's um, also going to make us win the McLean League. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, he's totally going to do that. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Either way. Uh, Elven Union, I think, will be the second uh, pick because... Souls of Dragonfire is having playing mm -hmm. his butt off to be able to go into the playoffs with a mm -hmm. pro team, and he's actually really doing a good job mm -hmm. at it. So I expect him and McMackey to be the teams actually qualifying mm -hmm. for the playoffs this season. I will say, um, I do think. Uh, okay, I think the I think Presenda is has probably uh, probably peaked. I don't. I think. They're going to come in a strong third, but it's probably going to be third. But there is a outside chance if Sol does drop some games, either Basunda or Fessa could steal that spot from him. I I, I do agree with you that it's, it's he's the favorite Soul of the Dragonfire, but um, if one person he does have do he it. does have a harder uh, second half of the season than the two coaches right bes right behind him. If one person is going to do it, it's going to be Tessa because he's playing Wood Elves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like those are most likely just to do it in general. Mm -hmm. Like, Fessa lost the tiebreaker against Soul of Dragonfire, but he does have an easier second half of the season than than Pro and a Party does. And uh, honestly, the Lizardmen have a probably have a be better second half as well, at least in terms of the teams they're playing against. Uh, actually, I say that, but they're playing against the whole, both of the elf elf teams, who I think they're going to have a hard time with. So maybe not. Uh, yeah. No, I agree. I agree with what you're saying with the elves. I do think it's going to be something uh, along mm -hmm. those lines. Uh, what else do we have which I can say? I don't really know, to be fair. Uh, Space Lion and uh, Iron's Forge 12 of the Triar Triari have a chance of getting there, but I do not see it happening, sadly, for them. Um... Yeah, like pretty much, Soul of the of Dragonfire would need to either th he would his team would need to implode. Pretty and much, yeah. If his team implodes, this second place spot is anyone's to take, uh, almost anyone's. But I cannot see McMackey not coming in first. I do think that if you have one like seven wins in the season, then you are going to be at the top mm -hmm. three at least. 
uh, since the top two spots are going to be playoff spots, there's mm -hmm. a big chance he's going through. I really do not see him, like, you know, failing to get mm -hmm. there. It would be a surprise for me anyway. Yeah. And as we already established, he's already beat his num his biggest competition, Soul of Dragonfire. That pretty much shields the deal in my book. Mm -hmm. It's wave all over again. Only I can get behind this one because it's Kepri instead of freaking lizards. <laughs> Either way, that was a recap of five B and five C. Do we have any else? Anything else to like capture for that? Uh, well, let's see. I mentioned all of the stunty game stuff already, so. I think that just about does it. Uh, next week we will hopefully have nose dice, and we will definitely be back to the regular recap. Yep, we will so, having a uh, back on normal recaps. We will probably do a reset on all the things we will look at weekly, mm -hmm. and we will keep everybody up to date of what's going on the landscape of five B and five C. Okay then. So until then, this has been Team Foul bringing you the well. The, well, you just said the divisions. Bring you the <laughs> recap. Bye. Whatever he said. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>